Hey there, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. We're a 40 acre off grid homestead living in Alaska. And today I'm gonna show you how I can frozen berries. We're gonna can three different kinds of frozen berries today. I have about 25 pounds of blueberries, 25 pounds of blackberries, and then all these strawberries. Now, if you watch our videos, you'll know that I bought all these a while ago. I bought 120 pounds of frozen berries from Azure Standard, and well, they're taking up freezer space. There's no more room in the end in my freezer. And we're getting a couple cases of beef fat so that I can render them down into tallow and I need a place to store those. So berries gotta go in jars. There's two methods that we're gonna use today. The blueberries and the blackberries can be canned the same way, but the strawberries have to be canned a different way. It's important to note that I do my very best to follow the standards and regulations for the National Center of Food Preservation, but I don't always do that. And I'll always let you know where I kind of tweak it because for me, I need to conserve power and fuel because we live off grid. For now, let's put these strawberries aside and we'll talk about the blueberries and the blackberries. Now, when you're canning blueberries and blackberries, there is a hot pack method and a raw pack method. Now, the hot pack method says you put it all in the pot with your water and your sugar and you heat it all up and then you can put it into the jars boiling and then water bath can it. Well, I don't want to take the energy and fuel, this is our propane stove, that it takes to heat all these up. So I'm going to do it a little different. Now, if you watch my video where I can frozen corn, I kind of use the same method. I could heat everything up and waste all that fuel, then water bath can it, or I can just let it thaw in the jars. And especially because these berries have a raw pack method, that's where the, you put the berries in raw and then you put the hot liquid over it, but then what's in the jar isn't boiling anymore because, well, the berries weren't hot in the first place. So here's my thoughts on it. Um, if I fill these jars up with frozen berries and then add the water on it, and you can add syrup or light syrup, but I think I'm just going to add water to these so that I can decide how much sugar I want to add later. And I just let them come up to room temperature. That's pretty similar to if I was using a raw pack method. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to use my big canner for water bath canning because I can fit 11 quarts in the bottom of it. Um, and I want to get all these berries done today and so that's going to take a bit of time so better than using just your regular um 20 quart canner i'm going to use the 37 because the 20 quart canner i think you can get seven quarts in the bottom seven quart jars in this one like i said i can get 11 so hopefully that'll help me go a little faster but for now all i'm doing is going to scoop the berries into the jars and fill them up in the end you're going to want a half inch of head space so don't fill them up all the way to the top so i'll meet you back when i get i don't know all these jars filled <laughs> Okay, we ended up with 18 quarts of blueberries. I did change my mind um, and I decided to go ahead and overfill the jars a little bit because I think once I pour the water over these frozen berries, they're kind of kind of settle and squish down. Um, and so I would like to have mostly full jars of blueberries and not half blueberries and half water. Um, so another thing I changed my mind about is, you know, because we live off grid, I often for some crazy reason think an apron is a waste of laundry. Um, and I just think, no, no, I'll stay clean. It'll be fine. But I'm already turning purple. <laughs> and so if I don't wear an apron, my future self's going to be real mad at my past self. So I'm going to get an apron on and then I'll show you what we're doing for the next step. Okay, next step, get some water. <laughs> Okay, we have our water now. We're ready for our next step. We're gonna pour the water over the frozen berries and leave a half inch of head space. Now, if you don't know what head space is, it's the space that you leave between the rim of the jar and the contents of what's inside your jar. Now, if you look at these jars right now, there is no head space, right? Because the berries are way above it. That's because remember, we think that when we pour the water over there, it's gonna settle down and we will be able to end up with some head space. So we'll see how that goes. But a half inch of head space. Um, you can get a little measuring tool if you want. You can tape measure in there, you can put a ruler in there, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can do all those things. Or you can remember that the distance between the rim of the jar and this ring that goes all the way around is about an inch. So if you just do to half of that space, you know it's about half an inch. All right, so let's see how this goes, right? Okay. Oh, they're going down a little bit, so that's good. I'll show you in just a second. Oh no, that worked out really well. Here, I'll bring it over. 
See, we did pretty good. There's a maybe a little bit more than half inch of headspace. If we wanted to be real picky, we could add some water, but I don't get real too picky about headspace. But if you wanted to, you could. Um, but those berries settled down nicely, so let's get the rest of these jars filled. Okay, that method worked out pretty good. Um, some of the jars did end up with a little bit less than a half inch of headspace. Um, if you like to be really precise on your headspace, you could always ladle a little bit out with a spoon. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I've never had an issue with it. So your next step is to clean off the rims of the jar. So you get a little paper towel, you put some water on it. Um, you could use vinegar if you want. Lots of people use vinegar, but I find that I only need to use vinegar if something has oil in it or it's meat or greasy or something like that. And since this is just water and berries, I'm just going to use a little bit of water and make sure the rim is really clean okay make sure you're using a clean part of your paper towel see that got some stuff on it so I don't want to rub that onto the next jar so I'm just gonna keep moving it around until I get all the jars clean now we didn't get very much blueberry goo off those jars and you might think well crystal why would i even do that it was just a little bit of stuff and you might be right it is just a little bit of stuff however um the rim of the jar keeping it clean is extremely important because that smooth surface of the glass rim of that jar in connection with this rubber part of this lid when it gets heated up is what creates this suction seal um, and so that's really important if you have a little bit of that blueberry goo on the rim of your jar then well your seal might not work and you're going to do all this work and the seal's going to fail and air's going to get in there and you're going to have to throw it away in a couple days when the seal pops um so it's important to clean the rim of the jar now when i do canning there's a lot of things i cheat with like, like i kind of cheated with the headspace i'm cheating with putting frozen stuff in jars but i never cheat on cleaning the rims of the jars that has to be perfect Okay, next step, you're gonna take your perfectly clean lid on the perfectly clean rim of your jar, put them together, okay? Then you're gonna take your ring, which holds the lid down until it just first catches, and then you're gonna turn the ring an eighth of a circumference of the jar. Now that's not as tight wrenched down as you can get it, but it is called finger tight. So it just means that you could still move it with your fingers either way um, if you wanted to, but that's tight enough that when I put it in the canner, and can it, it's gonna stay sealed. Okay, so now I'm gonna get all the rest of these lids and rings on and then I'll meet you back when it's time to do the blackberries. Okay, we got all of our blueberries done. They're perfectly in their jars. There's nothing else I need to do with them right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get these blackberries done exactly the same way I did the blueberries. You put the frozen berries in, you fill, it, you fill it up with water, try to get a half inch of headspace, clean the rims, put the lid on, put the ring, set it aside. Now remember, we still have the, the strawberries to do, but they are just hanging out thawing because they need to be done a completely different way than these berries. Um, a little bit more complex. Um, and not so easy as these ones. But while I'm waiting for these berries to come to room temperature and while I'm waiting for the strawberries to thaw, if I'm cool enough, I'm gonna try to make you guys um, a cheesecake out of goat's milk. And if I am cool enough and I'm able to make that happen, then I will post that video the same time I'm posting this video. So let me get these all done. And for you, it'll just be a second, but for me, it's probably going to be about five or six hours. And when these come to room temperature, we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, our berries are at room temperature now. They uh, thawed much quicker than the strawberries because they were in liquid. But um, our berries are at room temperature. I put water in the water bath canner that's also at room temperature. And so we're going to heat everything up together. Traditionally, this stuff would be boiling hot. The water in the water bath canner would be boiling hot. And then you would um, water bath can that way. But I'm going to bring these all up to temperature at the same time. Um, that way, remember, I didn't have to heat all these giant bunch of berries and use all that propane. So let's get these in the water bath canner and we'll start warming them up. Thank you. 
All right, looks like I was able to get 12 jars in there, but I needed a little bit more water. Okay, we got enough in there now. We'll turn it on medium. Okay, we got our first load in the canner, 12 quarts of berries. I have enough water in there that it comes up about an inch and a half above the top of the jars. I went ahead and sealed this lid, although it isn't necessary in water bath canning. But for me, I want to preserve as much propane as I can. I want to keep all that heat in there. I don't want all the heat to come out. Okay, so I have this on probably medium low just because this is on my big burner. Um, but that way, this water and these jars, like I said, will all come up to temperature on their own. They'll all heat at the same time. When this starts venting, I'll know that everything inside this canner is hot enough to be boiling. That's when I'm going to start my timer. Now, these berries with the raw pack method are going to water bath can for 20 minutes in quarts. And while that's going, I actually think I'm going to start a second water bath canner because there's a lot of berries and I want to go to bed at some point in time. Um, and then we'll get going on those strawberries. Okay, we got both water bath canners warming up and now we really want to get these strawberries to move along. Now, had we done these strawberries exactly like we did the other berries, they would come out really bland and yucky. Um, they would lose a lot of their flavor, a lot of their flavor would go into the liquid. So what we want these strawberries to do is to make their own liquid. Um, and so we're gonna dust these with sugar, okay? And that sugar is gonna help draw out their natural juices so that they can can in their natural juices and not in any added water. But they're taking way a long time to thaw, I'll tell you that. So I think once I get these all dusted um, with sugar, I am going to put them all back in my big metal pan or my big metal bowl here. And I'm gonna cheat and stick it in the oven that's still warm from making cheesecake. <laughs> So, sugar, sugar, shake it up a little bit. It's my famous popcorn toss. Yeah, so when you make popcorn, you gotta toss it like this to get the butter on everything. <laughs> all right, so let me get all of these coated in sugar and by the time we come back, we should be pulling the first batch of those berries out of the water bath canner. Okay, we got our first batch out of the canner. They look beautiful. There's a little bit more liquid in here than I think I'd like, but that's okay because in the end, I'm just going to make sauces and pie filling out of this. So we'll add a little cornstarch, thicken it up when I'm ready, and have a delicious treat. Okay, our strawberries are finally where I wanted them to be. You can see there's all this liquid that's been created now and all that. Um, that sugar will draw that liquid out of the strawberries, but of course liquid can't come out in a frozen strawberry. So that's what we had to thaw it out. Um, and so now I'm just going to fill these jars with whole strawberries. I'm using pint jars this time because there's not an approved method for quarts. Um, and so in this one, I'm following the rules, at least on the size jar. And so I'll fill up the jar. I'll probably squish it down a little bit. And then We'll take what liquid is left in this bowl and um, fill it all up to half inch of headspace. So let me get all these filled and then I'll come back in just a minute. Okay, I got all those strawberries done. Look how beautiful they are. I will tell you that the strawberries made a significantly greater mess than the other berries did, but um, it went a lot faster than I thought. The only real issue I had filling these strawberry jars is that you only have a finite amount of liquid. Um, when you're doing the other berries, you can just add more water. So I really had to balance out um, how many whole strawberries I kind of crammed in the jar um, to make sure that I had enough liquid. And then on the other side of it, not cramming so much that I just end up with strawberry mush, right? Because the goal is to kind of have um, whole strawberries yet. So I'm going to keep cleaning up my giant mess here and then for these jars, I mean, basically you're gonna do the same thing. Now that we have the contents in there, you have a half inch of head space, okay? I'm gonna put clean lids and rings on there, um, finger tight, and then I'm gonna let them, they're still a little cool, so I'm gonna let them come closer to room temperature, 
and then I'll get them in a water bath canner and I'm gonna water bath them for 15 minutes. Okay, now if you had boiled all of this um, hot syrupy strawberry stuff, then you could water bath it in pints or half pints for five minutes. But I don't wanna heat all that up. I just wanna use the propane for heating the water bath canner and water bath canning and not for do all, of the, all the preheating. Um, so I'm gonna run these for 15 minutes, which is the same, same time as the raw pack other berries. Now, there's nothing unsafe about, um, about the different berries. They both have a pH less than 4.6, which means that they are safe for water bath canning. And the fact that we added sugar to these strawberries, I think strawberries have a pH of 3.3, so way under the 4.6 threshold. And we added sugar, which also acidifies it even more. So, so we're golden on the safety portion of it. I just modified it to fit um, my situation and my environment and our resources. And so I would encourage you to um, always follow the guidelines that the National Center for Food Preservation has put out for canning. Um, but I like to do these videos just sometimes you can kind of think about it a little different. If you know what the rules are and you know why the rules are the way they are, then you can make your own adjustments in your own kitchen. Um, and so I would surely suggest that you only do what you feel comfortable doing and don't follow my bad examples. Um, so that being said, what I'm gonna do now is keep running these through the water bath canner. I think it's, I don't know, what time is it? Well, it says 9.24 on that clock and that clock is an hour off. So it's 10.24 at night. Um, and I wanna get all these rotated through the water bath canner and get Mr. Reeves some dinner, which he would probably appreciate. He's outside milling right now. So thanks for joining us at Flat Tire Farm. I hope you enjoyed my canning frozen berry video today. It looks like in the end here, I'm gonna end up with 40 quarts of blackberries and blueberries and 21 pints of these strawberries. So I'll keep processing all these. I'll make sure that in the thumbnail, you'll get to see them all stacked up and beautiful. Um, but for now, I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for joining us at Flat Tire Farm and I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Hey, you're in my thumbnail picture. <laughs>